share with us, via everybody in this room, to go off and do something different and pull it all together and share your ideas and point us in different directions because together the really important thing about today is not that I'm telling you this, I'm just telling you what we've done. But what we want at the end of the day is, okay, what do you think our game plan should be for the next year and the year and the year? And what are you going to do to make the difference? Because this isn't a sit and listen movement. This is a sit, listen and go movement. What we've done, the community played. We started with seed swaps, something very, very simple. Actually, we didn't. We started by kind of gate crashing a meeting here in this school with the senior officers of Calderdale Council including the chief executive, who's been fantastic. And we just, kind of like Patrick and I, sidled in when they were having the lunch and said, could we say a few words? And the words we said were very simple. We want to do this, and we're going to do this. We're not going to ask you for any money. We're not going to embarrass you. This isn't party political. All we want is for you to give us a clear run at trying to make a difference in our own community. And at some point, local authority, we're going to have to ask you for things, but it ain't going to be now. We're not going to start by saying we can't do it unless you give us some dosh, or dedicate an officer to us, or anything else like that. And the most amazing thing about that relationship has, uh, has been that because we, for six months we just did our own thing, we shared our own seeds, we used our own money to take us to various places, and none of this costs very much when you're kicking it off. There came a point when we had to say, excuse me, we're no short of land. Because we imagined, you know, we're fed up with people moaning that they haven't got allotments and, you know, all that palaver. Because we just said to them, just find a bit of land and grow on it. But there came a point where we needed to say to the local authority, okay, now we want some land. And you know what they did straight away? They dedicated some officers within the council to identify the land that they didn't need strategically. It's now on a register. They took to their legal department a licence that would allow people to grow and now in Calderdale we've got the first licence so that any community group can identify a bit of land that the council owns, put it to the council, the council does an assessment, it says yeah, you pay them 10 quid, you've got the land to grow. So we've stopped being victims and we've started being partners with the local authority. It's fabulous. And take local authority then expand that to network rail and Northern Rail, because actually, there's a car park, you've seen, some of you have seen it this morning, next to the railway station, in the corner, it had a really polluted area, it was rubbish. We have their permission to do something about it, it now grows loads of veg in summer, in the corner of the car park, and it's for everybody to take and help themselves too. The Primary Care Trust said to us, well this is quite interesting, what you're doing, Mary went to speak to the doctors in the local health centre, told them about it, brand new £6 million pound health centre. Some of you will have seen it this morning. Full of prickly plants and the things that people put in, you know, driveways and things like that. So we asked, what do you think if we took up the prickly plants and planted edibles and fruit trees and stuff like that? Yeah, we'd really like that. So after a little bit of a palaver, which included various people putting in planning permission to remove the prickly plants and put edibles, and we had to put the edible names in, in Latin and God knows what else, <coughs> we got permission. And now at the front of that health centre, there's apple trees and pear trees and cherry trees and, and so on and so forth. And not only that, because that's such a great success, and it was the community that put it in, just did it. Um, we built some raised beds at the back, which will be um, healing gardens, growing herbs and so on and so forth. So for members of staff that are stressed out, they go out at lunchtime, it's next to the canal, they fiddle around with some lavender and God knows what else, and feel better about it. It's a great way of relieving stress. What is really great about that is that last week we had the Secretary of State for Health come in, he really liked what we were doing, um, and, and so we're going to be exploring how we can roll this out. But significantly, the Chief Exec of the Primary Care Trust said, wouldn't it be great if we had this elsewhere? I said, absolutely, it'd be fantastic. Why don't we do this in every single health centre and facility in Calderdale? And that's what we're going to do. It's going to be the first area that has a means to making yourself healthier right there in your face. So forget popping pills and cutting people open. Let's start eating healthier. <laughs> That's fantastic. That just makes us go cold. Well, you've seen what Patrick said in the school. This is what's happening in the school place is totally fantastic. We've seen uh, all the primaries growing food and turning their grey tarmac areas into green wonderlands. The parents have driven it. The parents are the networks that make the difference. The parents will lead the teachers to thinking how important it is as the heart of the curriculum. So we've got this, oh, a 
fabulous stuff growing, and Mary managed to find uh, a few, um, you've seen that bolt. Well, basically, um, there were defunct bolts in a park in Halifax that were going to be dumped or whatever, and now we've got Mintominum. So every primary school is now growing from a defunct bolt, and as Mary likes to point out, it will flood, we're halfway there. <laughs> um, so they're doing all that stuff, and that's great, that's cross-cultural, cross-age, it's just inspirational. And because we were so enthusiastic as a, as a group of people, the local authority, and again the local authority comes into it, so key to enabling, facilitating what we want to do, making it happen. Said, well, there's a diploma thing being rolled out nationally in environment and land studies or land-based industries or whatever, but basically about ecosystems and permaculture and animal welfare and what, you know, how you grow food uh, environmentally, said, all that stuff. Well, why don't we base it at Todd High? Why don't we have Todd High as the centre point and the focus within Colesdale for that diploma? Well, that makes you want to cry because that means kids who are not interested in being like nuclear scientists, who are not interested in doing a whole range of professions, but who actually have a skill set that is going to be so incredibly important <coughs> in the future, they can get a diploma that allows them to think about working on the land, that puts them in touch with the environment, that understands the perspective of we are one species of many, and we are kind of like knackering it for everybody else. So that, for me, was inspirational. That means that when our kids, if you imagine, go through that diploma, we have the chance, and we're one of, I'd like to see this worked out in the workshop this afternoon, to think about, well, where would they take that after school? And how would they become the farmers of the future? And how would they become the innovators around food to enable us all to eat more healthily locally? So we're starting to see that kind of like learning process from a very early age in the primaries and before, actually, in the children's centre as well working its way right the way through to high school and beyond so that we've got, in 10 years' time, a group of kids that are coming out with a different perspective in their relationship with the world. How fantastic is that? That's just the best. Every local authority in the country, I think I'm right in saying this, will be having a diploma somewhere or other. We need to network those. We've not done it yet. But what we need to do is whip them up and bring them into part of the incredible edible network. So many more things that I want to share with you. Oh, I, want, I need to tell you about this fish farm. And conscious about time. We kind of like right at the beginning brought in a fantastic unit called the Green Business Unit that works in Sorby Bridge within Calderdale. And we said, come and have a look at the high school, see if you've got any ideas about what we might do. Looked at the land at the back, which you'll get a chance to see later on, and said, oh, Pam, can't believe what you've got. <coughs> fantastic. And before you know where you are, we've got a £750,000 lottery bid to, to put an aquaponics unit, that means we grow fish from the nutrients in the water, fish poo to the rest of us, you can grow the veg and fruit from that. It's all heated, you know, with understory, I don't know how it all works, but basically top-notch sustainable environmental practice. We're going to have orchards, we're going to have bees, and Chris is going to be talking a little bit more about bees later on. We're going to be having a living, edible landscape on the doorstep of these children so that they can go and experience it for themselves. Why do we not have every single school that is being built in this country have that sort of facility? Because we haven't got the imagination and the will, and it's about time we did. So, lots of stuff around that, and I just want to talk very briefly about the business plan. It's great that we do propaganda gardening, and we do propaganda gardening to say to people, you can do it, go and do it, don't be frightened. It's great that we've got this learning network and we'll be growing stuff at the back and it'll be on the table for the kids to eat, that's great. But fundamentally, if we're really serious about the issues ahead, we need to make sure that these hillsides around here and all the opportunities for growing on a commercial scale are focused on producing local food to local markets so that we throw our purse as supporting our local farmers so that we're actually thinking creatively about where we put up the polytunnels for the future so we can grow the veg commercially, that we do bring in market gardens. And around that, we thought, how are we actually going to do that? We did two things. The first was, let's think of a product that we could um, promote so that we could say to farmers, because we did have a meeting with the farmers and it was all like this, and it ended up all right, um, but I wouldn't like to say that they became immediate comments. <coughs> so we said, what can we do to show them that we've got brand loyalty around top of them? So we made up, just because it makes us laugh, because if you don't have a laugh doing this, well, you know, come on, it's hard looking up. Every egg matters. We just loved it. It just made Mary and I laugh, so we kept it. Beryl and Pauline run that one. And what we said was, okay, let's see if we can encourage more and more.